unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFO. Something out there. <laughs> Close enough to be observed. <laughs> what could it be? It could only be one thing. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of UFO No. I'm not sure if this is going to be a bonus episode or a regular episode. We're just doing this. We're just doing it. And uh, because it is, we're doing it. Nate's with me. Let's bring him in here. There he is. Look at how so handsome. <laughs> Out there oh, in the you. field reporting. Oh, amazing. It's what I do. I'm out here for all of you. <laughs> That's right. We're so glad to have you, Nate, out there in the field. Boots on the ground reporting. So important. Well, see. So important. That's what I do. I'll find blind Mike, guys, I promise. Fucking A. He's out there searching. Uh, so because it's October and it's spooky season, uh, we did a show on vampires and the elite, which uh, I talked very little about the elite, I realized after that. We talked more so about vampires, very little about the elite. But we got them in there. We also got aliens in there, so go check that out. Uh, but um, what we're going to talk about Today is we're going to talk about zombies because, uh, as, uh, got, what's that? It's got a lot of history. It does. It's got a lot it of history. Does. There's a lot of history in, uh, with zombies, but the great thing about zombies is that, uh, well, I love them. I don't know about you guys. I love zombie movies. I love everything about it. Uh, that, there is a place we live here in uh, Lewiston, Clarkston, and uh, in uh, it's an Idaho, Washington border town. In Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, outside of Coeur d'Alene, they have a place called Sil uh, Silverwood, and every year it's a little uh, theme park place, and every year they dress mm -hmm. it up like uh, a haunted park, uh, so it becomes scary wood, and it's so mm -hmm. rad. And they do there's zombies running around everywhere. It's super awesome. They chase you. Um, it's so much fun. And they had, for a while, they had a zombie train. And it was the funnest thing ever. They would just, you know, zombies would chase the train. They had actors that were, like, you know, shooting off the train. And, you know, uh, it, was, it was great. It was such a fun time. Um, anyways, we haven't get, been for a bit, but it, it's, it's great. So I love zombies, love zombie movies. I know a lot of people out there do. And since it's October and haunted season, it, it, it fits so well. To talk about zombies. So, as you said, Nate, there is a long history of zombies. And I don't just talk about, I'm not just talking about, like, in movies, because certainly in movies there's a long history, uh, going back to Night of the Living Dead, George A. Romero. But yeah. also, we're talking about ancient Greeks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of people know that, that in ancient Greeks, first civilization terrorized by a fear of the undead. And uh, archaeologists have, have dug up a lot of ancient graves that contain skeletons pinned down by rocks and other heavy objects because they really believed that uh, they could become reanimated. Can you imagine living in that time period and living with that kind of paranoia, that kind of fear? I mean, we didn't have electricity, the ambient light. It wasn't, you know, anything like it is today. Yeah. And so you just left there in the quiet, still night every night and just filled with those paranoias. Yeah. Well, like, uh, like we talked about, um, another case where they dug up a woman that they believed it was much, uh, fresher than ancient Greek. I would say <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not the right word more fresh, but, uh, it was more recent than ancient Greek. I think it was like the 1500s. Somewhere around in there, yeah. Of a woman Somewhere that, there. yeah, that was uh, buried and had a blade, a saw blade, put around over her neck, her neck uh, mm -hmm. the in case she uh, for fear of vampirism. Anyways, really interesting. So yeah, a lot of superstition that goes way back. Of course, I mean we know that you know ancient cultures. Oh, yeah. th there was a lot of superstition, but. The, the real question is, though, was it superstition or was it really based on something that existed 
in that time period that we chalk up a superstition? That's the real question, because now, of course, we're like, oh, boy, these primitive people, they believed in vampires. Oh, so cute. You know, but there's got to be a line of truth to it. Got to be. It can't just all be bullshit. Well, and as we know now that there's people that eat people, you know, serial killers that eat people. We talked about all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Dahmer's a big thing on Netflix right now. Yeah, exactly. Which is crazy. What, that we're glorifying people like that, you know, but there's That's a fascination. Surprising. It really comes with a fascination of the mentality involved to do something like that. But, you know, like people don't, people aren't fascinated with pedophiles. People no. aren't fascinated by, oh, wow, it's amazing to think about how people get in the mentality of wanting to fuck kids. No, nobody does Who knows, that. another 30 years we'll get a... Uh... Bill Cosby series. <laughs> or, an, or, an, or an Epstein series. Or an Epstein series, and yeah. that'll be the Halloween trend. Well, at least then we'll finally fucking know. Mm-hmm. With Cosby, we're, we we pretty much know. You know, little roofies, you yeah. don't get the job done. Yeah. Uh, but A little more to that pudding pop than meets the eye, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what's interesting is uh, is that we're fascinated with serial killers, but we're not fascinated with, you know, child abusers. We're not fascinated. It's, you know what I mean? It's just a, it's it's interesting how people get turned on, dare I say turned on by the idea of serial killers. There's people that legitimately get turned on by this shit. It's a level of taboo to it, I, I, I would imagine. I mean, it's the... Certainly. Depri- it's like we talked about letting go of your humanity. Yeah. You know, it's, it's no bounds, and it just seems that it just it has that dark appeal to some. Yeah. Well, before we go on a whole another turn, you know, a lane of, uh, you know, the, the, mor- <laughs> the morality of murder and watching all that, let's get into the history yeah. of, uh, of zombieism. So... So as as we said, going back to the ancient Greeks, um, but it's been around for centuries. It runs really, really deep in Haiti. Um, Possibly what they believe is that it possibly originated in the 17th century when West African slaves uh, were brought over to work on Haiti's sugarcane plantations. And, of course, the brutality of the conditions that they lived in, these slaves lived in. Um, not only just slavery, people are going to want freedom, but the the conditions that they lived in were were specifically horrifying. Really, really mm-hmm. bad. Terrible. Yeah. So according to some reports, the life, or rather afterlife, of a zombie represented the horrific plight of slavery. So basically you were a slave in this zombie So as opposed to being a brain dead being, the belief in Haiti is that you're actually trapped as a zombie. You're trapped, which is even, that's even scarier. Think about that. Think about still conscious, still there, but not in control, not in control. And, and the, and it's, you know, you, I mean, if you look at what zombies do, they attack and they eat brains. So, I mean, eating brains and also potentially, you know, hurting your loved ones. I mean, Jesus. But here's how it works out. Zombies and voodoo are really actually very closely tied. So voodoo sometimes um, called voodoo. What's that? Mm -hmm. I said voodoo in uh, some cases uh, goes hand in hand with alchemy, which is a Mm -hmm. form of science. That's right. That's right. Of working chemicals, creating chemical Mm -hmm. reactions and all that type of stuff. Alchemy is a... an incredible, you know, we call, we kind of just call everything science. And yeah. then you have the breakdown of individual sciences. But at the time, it was alchemy. If you worked with any type of ingredients, mixing them together to make potions or, you know, anything like that, that was alchemy. Uh, oh, yeah, so... Uh, the way a zombie actually came about was through a um, voodoo practitioner known as a bokor. And these bokors were alchemists, as you said, using herbs, shells, fish, animal parts, you name it, 
um, and other objects, creating zombie powders. Zombie powders that contain mm-hmm. tetradoxin, tetrodotoxin, which is a yeah. deadly neurotoxin found in puffer fish. And when it's used carefully at sublethal doses, the combination of all these things can cause, believe it or not, zombie-like symptoms like difficulty walking, mental confusion, and respiratory problems. So imagine somebody, you know, imagine an area where there's a lot of superstition or just, you know, potential evil forces, magic at work, um, and you have somebody walking around you know, not knowing who they are, not remembering anything, um, breathing weird and looking like they're dying. The other thing this, this stuff did is it created sores. So it was almost like an itching powder. It would create cracks in the skin. So here you have people that are, you know, cracked all over their skin, bleeding, running, walking around, having difficulty. Walk- I mean, just it's zombie. Straight up zombie. Mm-hmm. Aside from eating brains, it's straight up zombie. So here are some real life uh, cases of zombies. So that's that's where zombie kind of comes from. The term zombie comes from Haiti. This practice by voodoo practitioners that would actually curse someone. So they would actually curse someone and it could be for, it was actually, there was, there was a law for it. Did you know this? A law. Yeah. So in Haiti, there was actually, it was, it was kind of like a, a, a citizen's arrest in a way. So a citizen would come to someone, one of these voodoo practitioners with a problem from somebody else. So like, Oh, so-and-so stole this or they, you know, they, they, uh, they, they, brought shame on my family, whatever it might be. You could go to your voodoo Mm -hmm. practitioner and you could curse this person with zombieism. And in some cases, they were able to control the will of these people and actually get them to do what they wanted them to do, so take control of them in a way as well, which is super crazy. That is really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a law in way in which, once again, you were allowed to do this. You were allowed to do this. You were allowed to go curse someone if they had wronged you in some way. Imagine Can that. Can still do that? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I probably, probably. <laughs> Trying to get a raise at work, you know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, in 1997... The British Medical Journal, uh, The Lancet, described three verifiable accounts of zombies. Verifiable. In one case, a Haitian woman who appeared to be dead was buried in a family tomb only to reappear three years later. An investigation revealed that her tomb was filled with stones and her parents agreed to admit her to a local hospital. Meaning that when they found her, when they when they went and investigated the grave, the the coffin was filled with stones instead of having a body in it. And then and then That's they crazy. took her to the local hospital. Yeah. And did, was there an account for where she had been for three years? So, uh, well, let's see. Let's go into it. She was thirty years old. She had died after having fallen ill. Uh, and then again, her family recognized her as walking around as a zombie three years later. Um, no, it doesn't really go into where she was. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have all the links in the show notes. You guys can check it out for yourself as far as these, um, these, uh, articles that I'm kind of getting this information from. Mm -hmm. So another one was a young man who had, quote-unquote, died at 18 and reemerged 18 years later. 18 years later at a cockfight. (laughs) Of all the places. That's one way to spend your afterlife, I guess. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Another one 
was uh, another well-documented case, another Haitian man named uh, Clairvius Narcisse entered a local hospital with severe respiratory problems in 1962. He slipped into a coma and was declared dead and buried shortly after that. So goes to the hospital with respiratory problems, dies, or slips into a coma, then dies, and is declared, or I should say, slips into a coma, is declared dead. He doesn't actually die. And then 18 years later, this is when he woke up, um, walked up to Angelina Narcisse in a village marketplace, insisting she was his sister. So that's not a cockfight at all. Uh, doctors, townspeople, and family members all identified him as Clairvius Narcisse, who claimed he'd been buried alive, then dug up and put to work on a distant sugar plantation for 18 years. He was, he was captured as a slave in the meantime. So here he is, declared dead, is Damn. dug up, dug up, and then used as a slave. That's unreal. Unreal, man. So, you know, of course, you can go into the movie history of it, which, you know, goes back to, you know, early, early days. I mean, I think... George A. Romano really kind of made that staple. Well, actually, before that, in 1932, there was a movie called White Zombie. Mm. Um... But it was it didn't really set the standard for it at all. Um, but again, as you said, it wasn't until George A. Romero that really made it uh, what it is today. So mm-hmm. you're right, George A. Romero, he's the guy. He's the guy. I'll have to check out that White Zombie movie, though. Just yeah, to see. I am too. Cause it. I mean, it's that time of year, and yeah. we love to just crack into the old school monster movies, Creature from the Black Lagoon. All that good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good stuff. Um, right. So, yeah, 1968, you have Night of the Living Dead. That's where they really, like, pin down the characteristics of a zombie. You know, the eating of the brains, wanting to eat people, uh, mindless, the slow walking, dead, you know, all those types of things. It really became the staple of what zombies are in, in, uh, in culture. But... You might know, some people might know that there were actually some real cases of quote-unquote zombies. Um, And you can, I mean, in these cases, these people weren't really dead. You could just argue that they were cannibals. Uh, But their behavior is super odd. So the one one that, to me, and I'll kind of give you my take on this, but uh, the one that's really weird is uh, this Florida college student uh, have you ever heard of this in, uh, what was it, 2016? I, I probably did. There's a lot of weird zombie crap happening around those times. Yeah, very true. Yeah. So this one, in uh, 2016, 19-year-old college student Austin Haruff, uh reportedly stormed away from a restaurant in Jupiter, Florida, where he'd been dining with his parents, apparently up set over the slow service there. Oh, man. Slow restaurant service can turn you into a zombie. God damn it. I had no idea. I always thought it was the burger. (laughs) (laughs) From now on, I'm going to say that at a restaurant. I'm going to be like, ma'am, I don't want to alarm you, (laughs) but. But if you go any slower, I'll become a zombie. (laughs) It's likely I might end up eating you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> how much you want to bet you're kicked out of the restaurant after that yeah you don't want to do that yeah so apparently he's upset over the service storms out wanders into a neighborhood where a couple michelle michon and john stevens the third sat in a, look i already want that guy to die john stevens the third i'm sorry man i don't like your name i don't know you but eh, eh. I don't know. Anyway, sat in their garage with the door open, enjoying a quiet evening. Heroff pulled a switchblade on the couple, stabbed them to death, apparently without provocation. 
A neighbor attempted to intervene and called 911, but he was stabbed as well. When police arrived, they found Harif naked, ripping away chunks of the couple's flesh and eating it. He was also growling, grunting, and making animal noises. Repeated use of stun guns and a police dog could not sway Harif from his meal. And finally, three officers had to pull the man away from the bodies by force. Okay, Damn. that's terrible. Okay. If you've ever played, seen any of the zombie movies, played any of the games, you do not send the fucking dog in. Yeah. You do not want zombie dogs. No. God <laughs> damn, man. I'll tell you what. Look, we're going to start a consulting firm, okay? And we are yeah. going to be the don't do dumb shit consulting firm, okay? And and mm-hmm. anytime, anytime you're about to do something, send the dog in. We're going to be, hold on. Don't do that. Don't do something stupid. Mm-hmm. Who's your worst paper pusher you got in the department? Bring that guy out. Send him in. Yeah. The dog's multifaceted. So that's going to be great for many uses beyond this point. Do yeah. not sacrifice the dog. Don't sacrifice, sacrifice Bob from accounting. who just hangs out at the water cooler. That's all day. right. Cause if nothing else, you end up with one slow ass zombie. Yeah. You know, he was inefficient in life. He's going to be inefficient in death. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Like you said, mm-hmm. don't give it to the dog. Can you imagine a German Shepherd zombie? My God. No, I don't want to. No, I don't either. <laughs> God damn, man. They can they can sniff out weed really well. I don't want to see them sniff out my brainstem. Yeah, how are you gonna hide from that? You don't. <laughs> no. You're all using trying to use every command you can think of. Heal! Heal! <laughs> Did you try German? (laughs) You're all using Google Translate. (laughs) Oh, shit. So what makes this case really weird is prior to this, prior to this, he was a model student. Nothing wrong. He was going to school. He was in a fraternity, which that's, you know, may or may not be a bad idea. But either way. He was ha- in a fraternity doing good. He was having dinner with his parents. Even what's even weirder, his toxicology came back totally clean. No drugs, dude. Or Nothing. no drug that we are aware of. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like maybe there's something happening. Or now here's my other thing. Okay. Oh, well, here, let me finish this. Other test results for synthetic drugs are pending, I guess, at this time. When was this this put out? This was put out in 2021. So five years later, five years later, his toxicology for synthetic drugs is still pending? That's crazy, according to this article. As my son would say, that sucks. (laughs) That sucks, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> now here's my my other thought of this okay mk ultra style experiments where now here's what you have we don't know this guy's therapy history we don't know if he was you know he was in therapy for anything a lot of people are a lot of college students are it's a known thing if his toxicology wasn't. I mean, although I would say if his toxicology came clean, most of the time when people are in therapy, they're also on some kind of antidepressant, anti-anxiety type thing. But he could have simply been doing it the right way, which is going and talking about it instead of using the narcotics. But let's just say hypothetically, we're speculating here. That's what we do best on UFO No. But... Let's say that he was in therapy. Well, we know that based on MK Ultra experiments, that a lot of these people that were used in these were brought into the program through their therapy. That a lot of times their therapist was this Jolly West guy or one of the other people that uh, that were you know, working on this secret program that also were psychiatrists that were basically just creating vessels that they could control. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, 
what if this guy was one of these? Obviously not in the same, you know, era of the MK Ultra, the 50s and the 60s, but could still have been a victim of mind control experiments that he was triggered by something to go and do this. Yeah, because I would imagine it's not the slow service that triggered him. I would imagine yeah. that was just an angry reaction and the first thing he blames. But whatever snapped him, snapped before the waitress. Yeah. And we don't know what happened to him after he left the restaurant. In between, he got from there to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really crazy theories out there. and Well, I shouldn't say crazy. There's some very compelling theories out there about satellites that can communicate and put ideas in your head and, and control we hear, you. And we hear on radio frequency. I mean, our ears pick up different frequencies. That's so, right. I mean, That's right. All they got to do is find hard. the right one. And they've experimented on that for a very long time. How much you want to bet right, they've yeah. damn near perfected it. So after, the, after how long they started the research, I would imagine. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say that I think, along with the possibility that he just went straight up zombie out of nowhere, I say it's just as likely that something initiated that, whether it be a secret signal that was beamed into his brain, which I know I, I, sound, I sound kind of insane right now, but let's not forget that these things have been done. These things exist. So anyways, I think there's a real possibility that, that could have been some, in this case, when you have zero toxicology that says it was drugs, in almost every other case, you have something that triggers this. So in the Haiti cases, you have this weird curse, this this powder that's, that's used to, to turn people into quote-unquote zombies. But in this case, what do you have? You have no drugs, no a clean toxicology. You have what seems to be no powder, which even in those other cases, they didn't eat people. They just they just showed the characteristics on their body, the physical signs of zombieism, the slow walking and whatnot. But in this case, he actually went and ate people. And he was growling. And he was, I mean, that's, that's straight up zombie. But he's not dead. So that's what's fascinating about this case for me is that there's nothing that points to what caused that. Nothing. So that's what scares me. <laughs> is that, you know, well, I got plenty of conspiracy zombie crap for the governments for sure. Yeah. And MK Ultra would definitely be one of them, like we talked about with frequencies. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to affect that little voice in the back of your head. No, not at all. I, I don't think so. I mean, look, when you look at how really, I mean, in, in reality, how how complex but simple our brains are. You see what I'm, you know what I mean? Like the, it, it's complex, complex function, but really what we pick up is, is pretty simple because we can't even pick up half of what's out there. Well, Facebook has even come forward and admitted that they have ran experience by flooding people's feeds with positive or negative crap on their walls. That's right. And just to see how it would affect their mentality and those, and it did, you know, those with positive feed were more happy and those with negative, the opposite. Yeah. So, I mean, if it's that easy, just by you scrolling your Facebook, imagine what they can do with the technology that they're not telling you about. Exactly. That's my whole argument about everything involved with UFOs and everything else is we have no idea what's behind closed doors. We have no idea. And, and so we can't say what's, what is and what isn't government, what is and what isn't zombies, what is and what isn't radio signals coming down, because we don't know what exists. But what we do have is we have these clues that, well, they've tested these things before. They've experimented with these things before. They have successful results from these things before that they can base it on. And we're going on 70 years plus of doing this. Yeah. So it, it does not, it would not, 
surprise me at all to know that they, they are capable of doing all of this stuff. So that's my feeling on this is just as likely as it is. He just went straight up zombie out of nowhere that he also could have had some kind of signal beamed into him saying go zombie or whatever. I don't know. Zombie. Mm-hmm. Now go, go gadget zombie. I also like to get into the uh, chemical a- aspects of the sci- possible science of what they could be doing. I mean, sure. like you heard of the Russian sleep experiment, right? The what? The Russian sleep experiment. Oh, yes, but go into it for the viewers, please. Okay, so Listeners. if you guys don't know, and this is definitely something really messed up and worth looking into, I'm just going to skim skim on it and move on. But there was this gentleman that they had experimented on and kept him awake for weeks, weeks, no sleep. They had him in this uh, mask. They like he looked like this tortured, skeletal, just disfigured. This guy went mentally insane. It was just terrible. Started ripping at himself. But we've been conducting these. You go back even further than that, and we're talking about Hitler. Hitler ran experiments to keep his soldiers alive. That's how we got methamphetamines. That's how we got ecstasy. That's how we got all these different types of drugs is practicing to be a cult. He was working on his own version. That's how we got Nazi zombies. That's a big thing, especially for those that play those uh, video games. Nazi zombies is a huge franchise of its own. Yeah. And you go into the natural world and there's actually funguses out there that oh, yeah. will affect insects and it would basically destroy and eat out their insides. And even though this, this insect is dead, it's still walking. It's still moving. It Because it has taken over its brain. It has literally taken over its brain. It becomes a zombie to this fungus. Like That's the right. insect is gone. It's just a puppet to this fungus. There's another spore of fungus out there, and they're actually it's actually adapting, which is kind of the, the scary part to me about it. Is this uh, they find it on ants, and what it does is it as it spreads through their body, it leaves their brain intact. Yeah, but it will it will puncture through their heads. This little stem will puncture through their heads and it will force the ant to climb up and like latch on to a leaf. Bite the leaf and latch on. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's usually about, uh, I forgot the location where it was, but it's like an inch or so off the ground. 10 inches. Is perfect. 10 yeah, inches. 10 inches. Thank you. Thank you. And it will sit there and this fungus will spread its spore. It will drop its spores over the other ants that pass underneath creating more ant zombies. Yep. They've actually found in, uh, here in the States that the same type of fungus, uh, because of the climate actually climbs up a tree and holds onto a twig because the leaf will fall. So it Uh, learned uh, that in order for it to spread its spores, it latches onto a twig. So it learned that it can't use leaves and it can spread its spores, which takes longer and you mean to tell me that we have this in basic natural science and prior dictators and governments have experimented in such things. I am willing to bet that this is a, a, a potential biological weapon. Dude, I love it. <laughs> That's, I love that theory. That hold that holds so true, man. I mean, it, dude, you, you just broke it down perfectly based on nature and what we know that s- mainstream science and government does. They steal from nature and they they uh, turn it into a weapon or mm-hmm. into a drug or uh, something profitable. But, yeah, man, I mean, you nailed it. it 100% that could have been the case is in this is that some type of fungal bioweapon. Chemical induced that was given to this guy Mm -hmm. that we on Mm -hmm. his way from what if, you know, the other thing is, and we're going real long on this one story, but it's great. I love it. Um, What we do. Yeah. Is I wonder if he, you know, slow service aside, I wonder if he actually did end up with food and had an allergic reaction to some type of fungus in the food. 
could have been in his soda pop that he was wait he was drinking while he was waiting for his food. Could have been, could have been very interesting. But you're absolutely right, man. The idea that this in nature, which is fascinating stuff, the the cordyceps, I believe, is what they are. They're a, a cordycep uh, offshoot. Is yep. um, is fascinating the way it actually takes over the animal and grows out of the animal and then takes over the brain to relocate the creature to better be able to pass on its own spores. And again, the scary part to me about that is that this fungus is actually intelligent enough to know the difference that in this region, we only need to go about 10 inches off the ground and grab a leaf. Yeah. In this region, these leaves fall and it's not going to be conducive to our duty to spread our spores. So it latches onto a branch instead or a twig. Yeah. Instead of a leaf, like it learned. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, the other, the infamous, you know, the, the big one that a lot of people know about a zombie case is the infamous Miami cannibal attack. I remember when this came out, I was convinced this was it. <laughs> when Me this too. came out, Me too. Uh, 2012, May 2012 is when this came out. And if you're not familiar with it, um, it was a, uh, it was a, oh, hold on, pardon me. My phone. Yeah, this one had me freaking out a little bit. Not yeah, gonna man. Lie. I was convinced. <laughs> I was like, until, and you know, and even when they broke down, like, what he had in his system, I still was like, but but mind you, I never heard about the 2016 one. So if I had heard about the 2016 one uh, around the same time, because I didn't, I didn't hear about that one until I started researching for this. But, um... It wasn't until, uh, you know, if I had heard about the 2016 with the guy we just talked about, that would have freaked me out way more because he had zero toxicology. Whereas in this case, at least this guy came back with PCP in his system. And PCP is fucking nuts, dude. I thought they had recovered bath salt. Bath salts, but bath salts is a in this case was a derivative of PCP. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so here's what it was. The, the, yeah. So there's actually video footage of this and I'll, I'll link it in the show notes for you guys, but here's what it is. So Miami resident Rudy Eugene stripped naked and attacked homeless man, Ronald Popo, Popo or Popo eating about 80% of his face. And when police arrived on the scene, they were forced to open fire on Eugene. And he took what they say far more bullets than his body should have been able to withstand before finally dropping. Yep. It, it was originally theorized. Oh, so here's what it came down. It was originally theorized that Eugene had ingested bath salts or even PCP. But... Toxicology reports revealed only trace amounts of marijuana in his system. Leaving the explanation of a zombie-like attack on Popo a mystery. Holy shit, dude. It's the same scenario. Except in this case, he'd smoked weed, which is not good for, you know, us potheads. And to reiterate, as we've always said, is that the government never does anything fast. They will always trickle yeah. little experiments. And we know they experiment on their own people. So something tells me biological, but we'll find out. I mean, time. dude, if you, th- if you listen to these, look at, look at the cases. Okay. You have 2012, this guy, we don't know where he was before this. So he may have run being, uh, being uh, aggravated by slow service from somewhere else. Uh, but we have no idea where he was prior to this. But either way, what did he do? He he. When they found him, he was naked, eating this guy. Well, what happened to uh, this nineteen-year-old student? He was found naked, eating this couple. And for your listeners, if you really want to do some research into this, around 
around this time frame we're talking about, if you look up these attacks, they're all over the country. There were some in Texas. I remember after this guy in Florida, like we had just said, it, it gave me a little bit of a panic. Like, this is it, man. This is the zombie apocalypse. And I kept watching the news for a while. And it was amazing how many drug induced zombie attacks were happening over those years. Supposedly drug induced. Supposedly. Yeah, we really don't know. Got a trusty news reporter. <laughs> Well, I mean, dude, I remember it was like a known thing you'd taken bath salts. That's where, I mean, all over the place, mm -hmm. bath salts. Oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. Yeah. So it's like, wait that's a minute. They, that's not even what caused it? Yeah, that's fresh knowledge to me now, too. Holy shit, man. Holy wow. shit. That's scary. Very scary. Some of the lesser, um, those are those are two, uh, in my opinion, two of the most dramatic cases of uh, zombie-like behavior. But in some other not so dramatic, but still very weird cases of uh, what appear to be undead people, uh, Kevin Santos was pronounced dead at a hospital in his hometown of Balaam in Brazil. The two-year-old was placed in an airtight body bag for three hours while his family made preparations for his funeral. During the wake, the boy started moving. Santos then sat up and asked his father for a glass of water. The ecstatic family was let down, however, when only seconds later the boy fell over again. He was rushed to the hospital and declared dead a second time. So... What they chalked that up to be is that it was like some kind of weird signaling in the brain. But can you imagine that as a, as a, I mean, dude, as I'm a father, you're a father. You I know, couldn't do it, man. I, that I can't even imagine. I mean, let alone the fact that you're burying your child, but then your yeah. child sits up and asks for water. The hope, the, 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 and then dies again, dude. I don't, how how I I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, forever I in my head. Imagine having to deal with that. Forever in my head, I would be mm -hmm. I would be doubting the belief that he was actually dead. I'd be waiting for him to do that again. Because you're already yeah. you're all your disbelief of your child being dead is already there. I mean, not that I've experienced that, but that's a very common. Uh, yeah. testimonial is that I, I just, I can't believe it. I can't accept it. You know, it, it takes too long for mm -hmm. people to accept that. So already you're dealing with that, that, you know, the, the, I can't, I can't believe he's dead. And then to see, I just, man, that, that blows my mm -hmm. mind. Those, Heart -wrenching. those, that poor family, mm -hmm. that poor family. I can't even imagine. Um, so, yeah, so this one is, again, not undead, uh, but still, I mean, technically alive, but also dead. So, uh, crocodile is a drug that rose to prominence in poor areas of Russia because of its potent opioid effects combined with the affordable and easy methods uh, of its production. There are reports of the drug cropping up in the U.S., um, and it's side effects, dude, it's side effects. So it's potency. So What's that? I said, it's so gross. Oh, you know about this? Oh yeah. Oh dude. So, so yeah, it's not only can it be lethal, but it's side effects, uh, are basically like gangrene. It mm -hmm. literally eats the fle your flesh from the inside out and it leads to often open swords open wounds uh leaves their Hard bones exposed area. what's that mm -hmm. i said in some areas are like calluses the skin like and it gives it like a scaled almost look that's why it's got it got its nickname the crocodile, crocodile. oh crocodiles because some of the effects look like it leaves scales on your skin Wow. But it's just like dead flesh. Just rotting. Mm -hmm. Yuck. 
It, all, it can also lead to incoherence, jerky motions, and shuffling or shambling steps. Dude, that's straight up zombie. In other words, crocodile turns you into a zombie. Technically alive, do but it, in guys. many ways also dead. There's nothing wrong with going and doing your responsibilities, coming home and just smoking a bowl and calling it a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't yeah, don't do these drugs, man. God damn. Don't do it. If it comes from the earth, it's probably okay. Probably. Yep. Probably. Not always. Not always. So a couple others. Uh one of them was the case of Ann Bagenholm in 1999, lost control while skiing in uh, the Jolin Mountain Range, plummeted through a thin layer of ice covering a stream. Friends pulled her from the freezing water several minutes later, but her heart stopped. Um, eventually, they rushed her to the hospital. Her heart stopped. They gave her medical treatment at the hospital. Um, one of the emergency doctors... Mads Gilbert believed uh, that due to the frozen temperatures, it had actually kept her alive. And so in this case, after over three hours without a heartbeat or any vital signs, she they were able to slowly revive her. She went on to make a full recovery, proving that sometimes death is truly not the end. Three hours. It's kind of like the end of Shaun of the Dead where all the zombies get a job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I wonder how her brain was because kind of one of the theories is is that your brain, uh, you lose function of the brain after that long. Deprivation of oxygen. Yeah, so I wonder, stuff, you know, they yeah. don't really, it doesn't really go into that, but I wonder mm. how much that played a part in her life. Um, Another one, having died in 1907, October 1936, Felix, Felicia Felix Mentor wandered into town, dazed and disheveled. She started referring to herself in the first and third person and would laugh maniacally for no reason. Creepy. Dr. Louise P. Mars insisted Mentor's reappearance was either a case of mistaken identity or severe schizophrenia. But there was a writer, Zora Neale Hurston, who insisted that locals told her uh, mentor state was a result of pharmacological zombification, which I believe is what they're talking about in the Haiti belief. Pharmacological yeah. zombification because you're using a powder, basically a combination of things to create that effect. Yeah. Alchemy. It's a thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, there's zombie spiders. You heard about this? Oh, God, that sounds terrifying. Uh, the tropical wasp species. Uh, Hymenos, uh, Hymenopimescus, Arnip, whatever. H.A. is a parasite, and it attacks... Uh, it takes advantage of an unlikely host. The web of the orb weaver spider, Plesia meta argyra, is normally a place where bugs meet their untimely death and become spider snacks. Using an arsenal of toxins and mind-altering chemicals, H.A. is able to turn the spider into a slave and a meal and its web into a safe haven. The female wasp finds a spider to be an, an, a kind of unwilling wet nurse, then stings the spider into submission, lays an egg in the spider's abdomen. The larva hatches, stays inside the spider, using, using the body as a buffet, as in draining the spider's blood while hypnotized, while the spider is hypnotized and it just goes about its business. After a time, the wasp larva needs a cocoon to move on to the next phase of its life cycle. So the wasp in training injects the spider with a chemical that compels the spider to build a web fit for a wasp cocoon. After this, the spider sits in total compliance as the wasp sucks all of its remaining life 
at which point the little jerk discards the corpse, builds its cocoon, and awaits its ascending to full-on jerkhood. What a douchebag. What a douchebag indeed. That's crazy, man. That's, can you imagine? The Western Hornets contribute nothing. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Fuck those guys. <laughs> yeah, man. That's scary. I'll tell you. I'll tell you all the ways. Uh, zombie dogs. We were talking about zombie dogs. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, they just leave dogs in suspended animation. That's all it is. They're not really zombies. Well, that's fortunate. Yeah. They're just, uh, they're just in suspended animation. So, I mean, I, I've been doing the wrong poor puppy, but at least it ain't resident evil dog in it, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cause that's the last thing we need. Yeah. So the dog is considered technically dead without a heartbeat or brain waves, but then is revived with a blood transfusion <laughs> or electric shock up to three hours later. Like you said, poor dogs. Hmm. So sad. Zombie dogs, zombie spiders, zombie ants. Zombie people. Zombie people. There's a zombie sleep sit, uh, sickness. There is nothing sacred. In African countries, <laughs> um, there's a sleeping disease that runs rampant, affecting tens of thousands yearly. Uh, according to Professor Sanjeev Krishna of St. George's University of London, quote, at first it will cause headaches, aching muscles, and maybe itching. But in the late stages, when the parasites have invaded the brain, the signs become more obvious and ominous. Victims find it hard to concentrate. They become irritable. Their speech is slurred, and they stop eating. They stop eating normal things. Their daily rhythm becomes disrupted to such an extent that they can't sleep at night and find it almost impossible to stay awake during the day. It becomes very hard for them to do simple mental tasks, such as drawing a straight line. Damn. This is an infection that carries nightmarish qualities, reducing many of its victims to a zombie-like state before they go into a coma and die. Damn. Damn. So as you can see, <laughs> there are a number of ways in which a person or an animal or an insect can become a zombie. Everything from what, you know, what, what most people thought of was uh, bath salts turns out to be not bath salts, turns out to be just some random thing that turned these people into zombies, which they weren't even dead. They were just uh, crazy cannibals um so in the end you just got to ask yourself how believable or how realistic is the theory of zombie seems pretty realistic to me mm -hmm. seems pretty realistic to me you know then you have <laughs> then you have you know according to the i am legend and i brought up this up before but according to i am legend uh the movie I don't know if you're familiar with the movie or the graphic novel, but I believe in the graphic novel it's very similar in which that uh, there is a, well, I'll reference the movie because I don't know if this is the case in the comic book. In the movie, in the very beginning, there's a lady being interviewed and she's asked about this vaccine that they're, that they're uh, creating, developing, and... The interview basically asks her, so, you know, are you saying that you've cured cancer? And she, the say, lady says, uh, yes, I'm saying that we've cured cancer. And then, boom, fast forward, everyone's gone. The whole world, everyone's gone. And there's a couple of key factors here. One, there's one part in the movie that they show gas prices, <laughs> And the gas prices are upwards of $6. And at the time, it was very rare to see gas up over $2 at the time. Now, it is nothing. There are parts of the country where gas is up over $7. Okay, so mm -hmm. clue one, that uh, the world has gone already fucked for other reasons. Gas prices are insane. 
Clue two, they're developing a cure to cancer, which, mind you, they already have. Have you seen this? No. So they have already created a, I'm not sure if they're calling it a vaccine, but I think we're in, a, in a, an era of vaccines. Um, hold on. That shows to cure cancer. Um, they're already doing this. Yeah, see, they're there. Well, let me see. I'm trying to find the actual article where they they showed. They seem to show. Um, because I want to show you guys, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. All I'm saying is that if it actually happens, I'm hoping for like a Walking Dead version. Because I mean, if the zombies are actually just walking, yeah, chances of survival to me are a little bit better. But if we're talking like World War Z type zombies, rage virus, yeah, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, here we go. An experimental cancer drug that had a 100% success rate. I'm going to try and show you guys real quick. I'm going to try and show you guys real quick. See if I can do it. Let me see if I can do it. Boom. Look at that. So. You did it. This experimental drug could change the field of cancer research. Mind you, this is June of 2022. A tiny group of people with rectal cancer just experienced something of a scientific miracle. Their cancer simply vanished after an experimental treatment. In a very small trial done by doctors at New York's Memorial Sloan uh, Kettering Cancer Center, patients took a drug called Dostorlimab, for six months, the trial resulted in every single one of their tumors disappearing. The trial group included just 18 people, and there's still more to be learned about how the treatment worked, but sometimes they say that these kinds of results have never been seen in the history of cancer research. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing at all. In any way am I saying this is a bad thing, but I'm just saying, isn't it ironic? <laughs> You don't know, you think? Don't you think? Uh, so yeah, it's. It, I just think it's. Uh, it's interesting to have a very clear point made in this film that it was a cancer drug, and that gas prices are very high at the same time. <laughs> is what I took from it, and now I'm looking at things and I'm going. A uh, cancer trial is very positive, and can uh, gas prices are very high. Oh shit, guys, we're in it. So now it's got me thinking about zombies, and of course we're in October, and uh, you know I'm it's I'm I'm just like it's all adding up. Synchronicities are abound. Here we go. Get your guns ready. Get your guns ready. Aim for the head. Double tap the shit out of them. Double tap the shit out of them. That's right. Absolutely right. Yeah. So, uh, so Nate, now instead of uh, I, I feel uh, I feel very trepidatious about <laughs> about zombies. How about you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's always been kind of a paranoia. I've always had a little weird paranoia about zombies growing up, and as I've gotten older and gotten more into the whole science and wiser in the ways of the world it's a little more creepy yeah you just realize how much is really possible mm -hmm. and then you start looking into things like quantum mechanics and you start to realize that oh literally anything is possible literally anything particles could just separate you know what i mean i mean think about that we're all made up mm -hmm. of particles at any moment in time these particles do, could decide ah, i'm done I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. What is mm -hmm. it that binds everything together? Energy, bro. Energy. That's what it's really all about. It's really all about energy. That's why all these things are connected. That's why it doesn't matter if we're talking about zombies. 
It doesn't matter if we're talking about UFOs, aliens, Bigfoot, uh, government secret projects. It's all connected. You know why? Because they all utilize the same energy in the universe. The same energy that you and I use for inspiration, for, to, for life, connection, love, hate, all these things is the same shit that possibly is powering all these weird anomalies in the universe that we call things mm-hmm. like zombies and ghosts and whatnot. It's just amazing. The depth, you, like you really just never know. It's scary. It's scary, but also amazing to just think about what really all is possible out there. It really is. So, with that, Nate, I want to thank you for your thank you for your thoughtfulness, your mind, and your wit, my friend. Always appreciated. <laughs> I love being here, and thank everybody for uh, having me on board with uh, Ben here. He's amazing, and I love helping out. Thank you, my friend. Well, it's really fun having you, and. Uh, you know, me and Nate talk a lot about when he, because he lives over. Where where are you at? Whereabouts are you at? I'm just up uh, north of Seattle area for now. And we're, we always talk about, man, when we finally get this thing together in the same place, it's really going to take off, you know. Yeah, it's going to pop. It's going to be great. So, obviously, you know, I, uh, I always want to keep Blind Mike in our thoughts. You know, for the blind one, y'all. But at the same time, we got to move on because uh, I just don't know. I just don't know how to get in touch with them. I don't know how to even begin to get them back. So I need your, all your help links in the show notes, bombard his Facebook page because that's the only electronic place I know where he resides. And that's the best link to being able to pinpoint his location, wherever he may be. Um, So try and get communication to him. So on, on top of just thinking about him, also hit that Facebook up and let him know whoever has him know. Uh, we need him back desperately. Uh, we want him back. We, we love him. And uh, we love having you, Nate. So thank you for uh, for being with us. And uh, I'm so glad that we got together on this. Me too. Thank you again. Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah, yeah. the big question is, as I always say, is uh, what do you all think? What do you all think about zombies? You believe in it? You think it's possible? You think we're headed there? You think we're in it? What do you think? I want to know. I want to know. Uh, so hit us up. In the show notes, link in the show notes, portal all things UFO know. You can access the email. You can access the merch. You can access all the channels that we're on. Um, you can listen. You can watch. All of it is in that link to all things UFO know. But for now, I got to give my shout outs to my peoples. The Tinfoil Militia. I want you in the ranks. Go donate now at uh, patreon.com slash UFO know podcast. Casey Armadillo, Michael Ralston, Rihanna Little, OG Supporter, Designer, Tinfoil Hat Wearing, Aaron Rice, Jesse, Jet League, Teague, Michael Benavides, Carlton Turner, Matthew Morphin, Morgan. Thank you all. Welcome to the Tinfoil Militia. And again, you too can be a part of this. Get a shout out on the show. Get a bonus episode over on Patreon.com every single week. Get involved. And help out the show. Help the show grow by uh, donating to patreon.com slash UFO No Podcast. Uh, as well as just go and share the episode. Share, share, share. And uh, remember to uh, like us on YouTube. Like us on uh, on Rumble. Subscribe. It all helps. Leave a review wherever you can. Apple iTunes, Spotify, all that good jazz. Thank you all so much. Um, that's it for us. Nate, where can the people find you, my friend? All right, guys, you can go ahead and find me up on Boldly Gone on Facebook. And uh, I'm also trying to help out on the UFO No fan page, also on Facebook. So search us up, hit like. Yeah, let's grow this thing. Uh, As I always say, stay elevated and keep your eyes to the skies. Watch out for the government. They're shiesty bastards. (laughs) 